And welcome to On the Record. I'm Shireen Bhan, and today it is our pleasure to welcome on the program Chairman Emeritus of DLF, Mr. K.P. Singh, who's just been awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award at the EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards 2022. Mr. Singh, many thanks for joining us here on the record, and congratulations uh, on the Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, you know, I, I, the last conversation that you and I had was when you launched your book, Whatever the Odds, the story of DLF. Yes, yes. Uh, and that's been many, many years. You yes. sort of went into uh, a self-imposed hibernation. You've decided to exit that. Why? Because I do believe that when you reach the age of 90, you must give up active management of a listed company. Or say listed company. So I thought it's time that my son takes over, who's an extremely competent businessman of India. And I become emeritus, and a lot of people drag on. I, I'm not one of those guys. I've been asking, I was asking him uh, several years earlier. I said, you step in. But then we had my, my late wife was not well, and all this kind of led on to. But at age of 90, I decided that I must give up this active executive role. Mm. Yes, you did give up your active executive role a few years ago. Uh, but, you know, in many ways, your story is linked to the story of a changing India. Uh, DLF is 70 plus years old. You were at the helm of DLF yeah. for five decades. Yes. You've seen the Indian economy change. You've seen India change. Uh, as you look back at the progress made, but more importantly, the distance to be covered, what's your assessment? Firstly, I feel people often talk India as a country. It is not a country, it is a continent. Mm. If you look at the situation when we've got independence, independence, India was a very heterogeneous area where, where east, west, north, south, I mean, they didn't look like, alike. The, the religion was different, dialects are different. There was nothing common. And there was education, literacy rates were completely different. So to, to homogenize it into a democracy, I must say it's a great feat. Successive governments today, one thing we can say, that within our constitution, what India is today is a homogeneous democracy, mm. like of which there is no parallel in the world. So I feel that way. But having said that, I don't feel satisfied. We believe we should have done better. There's no doubt about it, and in every sector of the economy, and the only thing you do better, when a public sector takes the role of an enabler mm. and leaves it to private sector to execute, public sector is enabler and facilitator to encourage the private sector to step in and carry the economic activity. Now, this period of last 40, 50 years, 60 years, was somewhat two step forward, one step back. And I must say today that a decisiveness of this government during the last eight, eight, eight years has completely changed the road map because there is a development, a development on a base created earlier. To say that base was not created earlier is wrong. It was very good base created, but not good enough. So therefore, I believe today, at the high time, the government is pushing it. Look at the state of the rural highways. Highways, uh, you see expressways going on, world class, unheard of anywhere in the world. Look at the way government handled COVID case. Mm. So India is doing well, but as, in so far as I'm concerned, I always believe uh, uh, perhaps not enough, much more need to be done for one reason. One, we have got an excellent 29 years uh, is the average age mm. of Indian workmen. And then we have got the highest talented entrepreneurs. You see, if you really see, I, look, I live outside, I meet them. Indian entrepreneurs are way, way better than any entrepreneur in the world I've seen. Mm. Our, our people can take, uh, take on to any, any entrepreneur. So they only need encouragement and uh, 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 sort of empowered to, to carry the business forward. 
because it is only ease of governance. Oh my God, the sky is the limit here. Well, you know, you say that the sky is the limit here, but I, I want to pick up on something that you just said, that you live outside. Yeah. You are now a non-resident yeah. Indian. Uh, yeah. You spend more of your time in London and in the south of France mm -hmm. than you do in India. Yeah. Why is that the case? Because it's a very personal thing. You see, perhaps there are a few examples. I had an excellent uh, married life, and my wife, late wife, was not only my wife, but was a wonderful support and friend to me. We were highly compatible. We grew together. And 65 years, we were married together. She died. We tried the best in the world to save her. I mean, the battle which we fought against, the air accident and cancer and all, but ultimately, nothing could be done. So then what you led in, you leave into a situation Naturally, as a lonely man, you get depressed. Now, this is not allowed to affect the functioning of a company. Mm. The company work is, you can't be depressed. You have to be positive, active. So I want to detach myself away. And then rest, devote the rest of my time in what I would like to do the best in my life. I have tremendous amount of relationship all over the world, friends. I like to visit them, meet them. And then, frankly, I'm quite a uh, dedicated golfer. I'm very active early and used to play ball. So I carry my sports. So for, the, for me, it is a, a connect, disconnecting from executive role. Mm. Because if I get connected to executive role, I would not be performing the best. Because my, my naturally, if you lose a partner for 65 years, you can't be the same. Your thinking goes differently. So I'm trying to restructure myself, but I'm here in and out, so I travel uh, when I feel like. You know, it's interesting that you talked about uh, being consciously aware of the need to let go. And many Indian promoters struggle with that. Uh, in this phase of restructuring or reorganizing your life and learning to let go, what has been the hardest part? Hardest part of what? Of, of learning to let go. Realism, because I'm one of those people, persons who understand one is called philosophical, other is realistic. I knew that a business operation requires active involvement, regardless of your personal issues. Secondly, positivity. So when you lose a partner like this, and you are in 90 years, your reactions become l slower. Mm. Whereas the company needs actions of, of a, not that I've slowed down, by the way, not at all. I've not slowed down, but I've not slowed, but I've slowed down in so far as my, uh, my responsibility towards the company is concerned. And my son is in fact doing better job than me, taking the company forward in a, in a very high trajectory with the same values which I did, rather better. So I'm very happy when I look back. If he was not competent, would have been worried to be. I'm very proud of what Rajiv is doing. You must have heard the way, yes. see how development is carried out, camellias mm. and all. Mm. And by the way, would you, you just in initially started, yes, DLF perhaps is the only company, 76 years back, it was incorporated few months before India became independent. independent. At that time, the founder, my late father-in-law, he was a very visionary man. So he thought that people will be coming from Pakistan. So he provided 21 colonies in Delhi. Yes. All these are provided by DLF, far ahead of the requirement. Mm. And there his business motto was the same as we carry now. Always carry business where ethic and morality are the uppermost. You will net cut, never cut corners mm. and all our operation will be within the four corners of the laws of the land. That was the way it started. That is what I did, and that's what my son doing. Mm. Fourth gen and secondly, is not the third generation. Fourth generation is business. I don't believe there is any parallel like this thing in the country. Of course, real estate none, but otherwise also, I would like to. I was doing myself. How many companies are there where the fourth generation and the brand values has got enhanced all the time mm. of the right and the company. Respect has increased, not gone down. Yeah. So that is what DLF is all about. You know, uh, 
I, I want to pick up on many of those things that you spoke of, sure. but you said that you haven't learned to slow down and you're still pushing yourself yeah. to do the things that you enjoy doing. You've just stepped away as far as the company is concerned. So I did away. Yeah. No, but, the, but here's what I want to pick up on the comment that you made about John Soros. I don't want to get into the yeah. argument on what John Soros said, etc. But you said that his comments are a reflection of him being addled by age. That's a fairly ageist comment, wouldn't you say? What is my age? You think? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're 90 you're, plus. <laughs> no, 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 no. So a lot of people think that I'm 70. Huh. Because I'm active. And I must say in my, I must like to pay a compliment to this thing. You see, when my wife was, she knew six months before that we have exhausted all efforts in the world. Cancer was spreading all over. So she, we sat down. She was such a very positive and a matured lady. She said, KP, listen, the biggest wish of a happily married couple is when you go, you go together. Not one is left behind. But in this case, what is happening is you have done your best, but I'm going now. It's a matter of few months. So therefore, I'm gone. You have a life ahead of you. Give me one promise. Make your life. Don't give up because by giving up life is not going to help me. But this life will never come back to you. You know, I followed it too. For a year or two, I was very like lonely. You do see television, more alcohol television. Because they're lonely. They're my, all my friends have passed away. Hardly any person my age. I was very lucky that I met a very charming person who's my partner now, Countess Sheena. She's one of the best person in my life I've met now. She's energetic. She keeps me on the toes. She learned golf, so that's my passion. And she has a wonderful set of friends all over the world. So I go with them, so therefore, the slightly I want to slow down, she's pushed it, come on, let's go, move. So therefore, I would say, substantial part of my being what I am today, credit goes to her. So you found love again? Uh, well, love is a different thing. I don't think, I can never love anybody, to tell you honestly. Love my, was my wife, late wife. But I find a great compatibility uh, with this new lady, Sheena. She's a wonderful person. And in a way, I, I would love, but love can't be distributed, isn't it? I loved my wife, late wife. I loved her dearly at the moment. Uh, to say, I know when Sheena hears it, she would like to see me to say I love her. But I have to be frank. I, yes, I appreciate her. I do everything. I'm grateful for the company she apprised me. But my love was only one in my life. And will never be any other love. We are going to take a break, but we continue our conversation with uh, DLF's KP Singh right after this. Watching On The Record with me, Shireen Bhan, and I'm in conversation with DLF's KP Singh. Talk to you about the other love in your life, and that is DLF. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you spoke about how the company is now being helmed by the third and the fourth generation, uh, and it still lives by the values that you believe it was set up with. But there's been many controversies over the last 70-plus years. Uh, I, I don't need to recount them. You're, no, fully, aware, okay. no, you're no. fully aware no, of no, them. No, no, no. Uh, you know, from, we've had conversations about your run-ins with Bansi Lal for no, for no fault of yours. To, of course, uh, what happened as far as the Robert Vadra matter was concerned. Where Ask there me was, any question. There, where, there was, where there are FIRs, the matter is in court, a commission was set up, etc. What have been the big learnings there as far as a real estate company operating in India within the parameters of the law, but also having run-ins with political parties, politicians? What's been the big le lesson? Big there? learning is, which I practiced, First, you never get into involved in any business relationship with any politician. You should have politicians as your friends, well-wishers. But not you should yourself not be in politics. I had, given, I had one chance in 84 when the whole village community, when I bought the land, and this was the biggest success, they all came with a, 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 in a unanimous choice for member parliament. So I talked to my late father-in-law. He said, I don't have to do Politics and business don't go together. So I was frankly slightly tempted because the whole unopposed I would have been. But for what? DLF would not have come there. The same thing. So I decided no, two things will not. We will do our business with political friends as we do 
with good relationship, well wishes, but never cross the line. Mm. DLF has, I can tell you, please take it from me, we have never crossed the line of doing business against any law. What happens is media needs some thing, uh, some masala to uh, bring things up. Well, it's, so, not just, it's not just the media, no, sir. I mean, argue to, be, with to, me. be, no. to be fair, no, to be no, fair. No, no please, yeah. argue with me. Mm. I'll, 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 let me ask you a yeah. question from you. Uh, to me, let me set this uh, and I say again, in my productive life, I have never knowingly broken a law. Mm. I'm known to be a, a compliant freak. I am by nature. Secondly, yes, I have, my whole life is built on relationship. I have relationship with every level of uh, governance, whether bureaucrats, in the highest society abroad. You can imagine from the best, highest aristocracy in England and everything, I have friends in India. So friendship is my base, mm. how I've gone through, mm. not by doing anything else. So if somebody say, oh, the elephant is wrong, it is just a fiction of imagination. Now, when you come around, it is also you should know that when you grow up in life, law of gravity is such that they will pull you down, and in any case, so many people being jealous and all kinds of things, throw mm. a story, but you keep your journey of going up and everything falls to the wayside if mm. you are right. Mm. And I can tell you today, my late father-in-law, myself, my son, and the fourth generation, his daughter doing it, we are absolutely compliant on these things. Now, some people can make stories, mm. ask me stories. And, 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 no, and, so, 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 you know, you're saying that you've always knowingly uh, not broken any law, but there have been instances, even when it comes yeah. back to the IPO, for instance, and there was a SEBI order, which of course then got overturned yeah. by yeah. SAT, but yeah. there was a SEBI order no. yeah. which uh, barred you from accessing the capital markets, which penalized you and six other senior executives of the company yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. So today, as you look back, are there, but, things, but that, are there things now that you believe are non-negotiable? For instance, you said that there will be no dealings with politicians yeah. or... No of any kind. No. So do you regret the deal done with Robert Wadra? Not at all. This is not regret. My God, without that, DLF would have lost a massive money. Please understand the business work. You've got nothing to do. With it. I, by the way, I've only played one day golf. I don't know the gentleman. Robert Wadra is a businessman. Mm. He's not a politician at that time, by the way. Businessman, he, Basically, they know how to make money, not how to lose. So in our business, it's very easy. I must have made maybe 40, uh, 40 50, 10 times millionaires than what does. Because what happens is, when you buy land, please understand this. Lands are fragmented pieces. Yeah. And when you buy, a, uh, when you try to develop, all our plan is on public domain in, in the town planning office. Mm. Anybody can go. So any smart person, and not, 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 not the, what, the 50 other people did the same. What they do, that they go, they hire one retired town planner, retired Tehsildar, Patwadi, and one hustler. Nothing else. This is the three, four organization. Do nothing. What they do? They go to the town planner website, find out where is for example, DLF or Unitech or uh, Unsels, wherever the, the mm. private side development is going on, mm. where is the layout? A town planner will tell you that road has to go, the, it can't go this way. Road will have to go this way. The gate entrance is this. So all in front of the gate, if somebody buys some land in front mm. of you, your whole thing becomes uh, um, uh, I'm a 50% appreciation. Somewhere in the middle of the area it comes around, road cannot pass through. So I, we then, do, we have to compulsorily buy those pockets mm. of land and see smart people buy land, sit on it, do nothing. Patwari goes around, get the shajra, mm. they go around, give the, uh, uh, more money to this, so do nothing. They keep on waiting till such time that when we grow, we have to acquire the land without yeah. that. Government yeah. doesn't acquire the land for right. us. So in the case of Mr. Vadra, simply the businessman, he bought land because he knew where the developments are going on. In, in, that land was very vital for us. Mm. 
So our principle always is, if we pay X to somebody, we must make profit of 2X. Mm. Simple. You know, loss, profit yeah. 2X. Yeah. Besides, remove a menace from the place, because if somebody sits on our head, mm. like take my, my, my house and say if somebody has, has unauthorized Jhuggi Jhopri yeah. on my gate, my belly will go down. Mm. So the development of a township is a very complicated mm. process. Mm. If you leave it, I'll give you a little example, you'll be understanding it. DLF Center, you've been there? Yeah. No? Yeah. DLF Center, I remember in 90, they started. It was, we had all tenants sitting there. So we negotiated with every tenant. We gave them 10 to 15 lakhs, nothing else, to vacate. They, most people mm. vacated. But there was one pawn shop, a little pawn shop, educated guy, and I used to do this all done by me personally. Yeah. So, and I don't take pawn, by the way. So, so I used to, agent will go, so one day he comes around, he said, 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 Mujiko was a crore rupee. This pawn shop, because that damn thing was only a little shop. Up, take a mujer Nikaldo, go to court, my court of white carpet. He knew very well hmm. that we cannot afford to go to court because court in India is 20 years process. Yeah. So we have to pay. So we paid him this much money. And thank God we paid our building came up. So hmm. in a real estate business, hmm. if some pockets of land come, hmm. which are either defacing your entry, yeah or inside, you have to buy them irrespective of who they are. Mm. So we don't know, water, nobody, there are 20 people come around like mm. this. So there is no polit politics in it. Mm. Question is, when we bought the land, have we made money? If we, I think we must make two, three X. Sure. So this is, is if you were in my position, what would you do if you're <laughs> township? Would you let somebody else sit over my head? And, 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 and the more you sit, yeah. The more price will go up. Yeah. So the, what is politics about it? It mm. only made completely distortion of facts mm. by uh, politicians who uh, started giving speeches and by then media put up. And as you know, DLA policy never, we never respond to a media critic. Mm. We never say anything. I mean, there's like so many things that keep on happening. We do our job right. Mm. So I can tell you conclusively, there was not even 0.1% irregularity in any business dealing which we had. So I wrongly completely explained. Let them go out. They will go out today. Yeah. And number two, but yes, for media, it's a good thing. Uh, blow up. So we are used to it. But, you know, I, I want you to go back to the days of the IPO because I do know that that was a very difficult and challenging period, a great degree of uncertainty. And then, of course, what transpired post that is a different story. But relive that that time period for me. What do you think? Can you imagine, yeah. if you want to know IPO? IPOs are generally 10 times checked in by lawyers because the, the, the IPO documents are such, we as business people know, we engage lawyers to mm. do accounting firms, everything. They do everything completely, everything carried out by them. So it's a question of a, whatever they say, and they have given us in certification that yes, everything is disclosed. If we, we say if something left or disclosed, there's mm. nothing called not disclosed. It pertains to some gentleman. As I said, who you find a lot of crooked characters in, in land. When you purchase land, they want to blackmail you. So they ask you some exorbitant price and we don't pay. Mm. We don't pay. So the issue is simple is, for example, say one thing we would have paid him earlier. We were going our, our stated policy. So he went to SEBI, went around, went to the Supreme Court. We didn't do because we got all lawyers, everybody said this yeah. is in the corner, there's nothing mm. which we are not disclosed. So it's a better subject to do this. business, there'll be no successful business unless you have, unless you have people hitting at you, hitting mm. at you. Mm. So it's, it, it, the thing is how you respond and you keep going up. We are going to take a break, but we continue our conversation with DLF's KP Singh right after this.